Now it's your time. Yeah, do your thing. Yay, it's new. <laughs> new, new, new. New, new, new. New, new, new. Yeah. New, new, new. Yep. New, new, new. It's always new. New, new, new. It's super new. Okay. Is that a tune new? Let's do this. Okay. We got, we'll speed through these. Back to new. Okay. Yeah. We yeah, got a yeah, pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is um, Bubble Sort Magazine a Real Twitter Pack. This is a pack that goes with the new Bubble Sort Magazine. There's a project in it. The project is you use an Arduino yeah. and a piezo and some components and you learn to breadboard and you learn to make a real tweeting tweeter. Like you a can- literal tweeting box. It literally tweets to tweet. And um, can you go to the next page? So I think yeah. this is the well, magazine. This is the zine, yeah. This is the zine, so you can subscribe to it. Literal Twitter bot is the project. But it's a, just a really cool magazine zine. I think it had a uh, crowdfunding campaign, but you can probably still pick them up and check out the very cool and well illustrated electronics and computer knowledge you can learn. And then we're glad That's to right. have a pack for their uh, magazine. So pick it up if you want to build this project. Okay, next up, antenna. We have an antenna. This is a UFL antenna. It goes with you know pretty much all of our cellular modules, the Fona 800, the Fona 808, even the Fona 3G. Um, we have had short antennas, but there are some situations where you want to have the antenna nice and far away from your project. So in addition to the 75 millimeter antenna, we now, for the same price basically, have a 300 millimeter antenna. It's perfect for quad cellular projects. Yeah. It's a nice little antenna. Okay. Next up, what's this thing? This is the touch board from Bear Conductive. Bear Conductive is known for their really uh, great conductive ink. It's um, company's called Bear Conductive, but you don't actually put it on your skin. It's just conductive ink, and it's it's, it's not just for bears. It's not wow. for bears. Okay. Yeah, it's not for bear or or for bear people right. either way. Um, but it's just conductive on its own. It's not silver based. It's it's like a, a plastic carbon based uh, material, and this is their. Uh, touch board. What's really interesting about it is the way they designed it. It's meant for a Pi Zero um, because it's a low cost Linux computer. You um, upload their image to it and then you can turn your um, uh, Raspberry Pi Zero into an audio effects board or any kind of effects board using capacitive touch and you've got those, those 12 big pads on the top that are labeled E0 through E12. Those are the capacitive touch pads. You, yeah. yeah, I'm hitting them. And then when you put those flat against a, a piece of paper, or you can clip onto them with alligator clips, um, you can, can, can create these beautiful fruit drums. Or aren't or you whatnot. glad we have? I am so a photo. glad. And then, okay. can we just show it really fast? Because it's a yeah. little interesting how they did it. So m most Pi hats, um, you you know you you have the Pi and then you plug the head on top. But this is actually one that you put it upside down. That's how it's supposed to work. And so the pie hat is actually flat against the table. And so now if you wanted to add conductive ink against like a piece of paper or cardboard, it would lay flat because it's a totally flat um, surface. So it's an, a slightly different way of mounting it, but I think it's kind of cute and smart. And it uh, looks like they added an audio um, output as well with a headphone jack. So you can connect it to a stereo or connect headphones to it. And they just use, um, yeah, there's the NPR-121. Yep, the NPR-121 capacitive touch sensor. And then um, an audio circuit that basically does the PWM audio that doesn't, ha it doesn't exist on the Pi Zero, but you can add it, and it just looks like a headphone out. And there's also an RGB LED on here you can control with their library. Yeah. Nice looking board, too. Very nice. Okay. Gold, black, white. Speaking of bears, I knew there was bears. Bears. There's, there's actually red bears. Yeah. There's red bears. So we, we, we have, bear conductors. Yeah. I wasn't messing around. No, you are, you're right. Okay, so this is the Red Bear IoT Fat. Yeah, so this is a, a mini hat-like thing. It's not literally a hat because hats have to be a certain size. Fat. But it's a, a fat, which is like a pie maroni hat, or, a, like to, or as I like to say, Pico hat. Yeah. Uh, it's about half the size, and it's the size of a, of a Pi Zero. And what this board does, which I think is really neat, is it adds, I think it's an SDIO um, Wi-Fi and cellular module. I think it's probably similar to the Broadcom chipset that is in the Pi 3, but this is basically an add-on and you can just plug it on top of a Pi Zero. Now, you, of course, you could always add USB and Bluetooth with the USB adapter, but what's nice about this module on this board is you don't need to have um, to take up the USB port. It plugs in and yeah, I think on the back they have the yeah, it uses the SDIO interface, which is really neat because it's exposed with the, the Pi 
two by 20 connector and um, basically you get Bluetooth and Wi-Fi at a fairly low cost and very compact form factor for yeah. your Pi Zero. So very handy, kind of turns your Pi Zero into a Pi 3 in a sense. Okay. Very nice. So check that out, a good accessory for your Pi Zero. Run right along. Not enough. An automation hat. And not, not enough hats or fats. This is the automation hat from uh, Pi Maroni. So we have, we have a hat or cap from everybody today. Yeah. This is a multi, multiplexator, multi, whatever, lots. Mm -hmm. Tons. Um, tons. So this is the automation hat. So this is kind of a, a jack of all trades for automation and motor control or, or uh, you know, relay control. So you've got three 24 volt, two amp max per relay. So these are, you know, they're actually the same relays that we use on the relay feather wing. So little mini surface mount relays and there's a relay driver. There's an analog digital converter chip on there. Um, it actually is a hat because it has the hat identification EEPROM. Um, I'm trying to see what else is on here. I think I think that's it. It's fully assembled. Oh, can we go to the overhead? Because I'll show mm -hmm. off. Yeah, just taking a quick look at it. So yeah, you've got the three relays. Um, you've got uh, a, a power a communication and a worn LED. You got the EEPROM for the fat um, analog digital converter up here. Uh, some sync, syncing outputs, so you have a, a basically a, a, a Darlington, I think a ULN 8003 or something. Yeah, it, UN 2003, so an uh, eight port uh, buffered output, so you can control these relays from that. And then here's the relay outputs you get, uh, normally open, common, normally closed. So kind of like you can control a whole bunch of stuff. Here you get the GPIO for RX and TX. So good for any kind of motor control or, or robotics control or, or home automation. Very handy okay. little hat. And moving right along, these are the boards. All that Raspberry Pis. So these are all Raspberry Pi products. They yeah. actually work with any Raspberry Pi, even though some are Pi Zero shaped or size. They all work with all okay. that was a question. two by 20 Pis. Answer. Yeah, it's a little, sometimes people like them small, sometimes people like them big. All right. And then we have uh, two RTCs and we'll try to do some questions. So okay. here you go, what you got? Okay, so we finally are back into Adafruit making some stuff. And so today we have a twofer. Uh, we have two real-time clocks. They're very similar. So I'll explain the difference between them. Yeah. Here's we the first have, one. Yeah, we have the PCF 8523 real-time clock breakout board. And this is a real-time clock. So, you know, if you add a coin cell battery to this, it will keep time for like five to seven years. Um, even if your microcontroller you know, loses power or your Raspberry Pi loses power, whatever, it will keep ticking. It'll just keep track of time for you. Um, this real-time clock is made by NXP. It's a very good real-time clock. It works with three volts or five volt logic. It's lovely. Yeah, uh, that matters. It's works, you know, I, we have code, we actually tested it with a Raspberry Pi, it yeah. works great. We have code for an Arduino, works great. It's not exactly the same code as a DS1307, which is a very common real-time clock, but it can be easily adapted. Okay. So if you have code for the DS1307, you can, with just changing a couple register locations, you can make it work yeah. with the PCF. Then there's this one who looks just like it. This one looks just like it, but it says DS1307. Uh. So the DS1307 is from Maxim, and it's also a real-time clock. It's an older real-time clock. It's been around for a very long time. Yes, yeah, in, the, in the top, sorry, right yeah. here. This is RTC and then a different part number. Sick. And the deal with the DS1307, it's a little older. It's kind of more supported by things because it's an older, more established real-time clock. It's very popular. However, it is five volt power only. So it's okay for use, you know, you can use it with five volt power and three volt logic, but it's kind of, if you have only three volt power available, like for example, our feather line, when we made a real time clock for it, we used uh, the PCF8523, not this chip, because this chip doesn't like to be powered from three volts. Another thing, a side mention, the DS1307 does not like to be run without a, a, a coin cell. Okay. You need to run it with a coin, so the PCF can run without. Yeah. I don't see why you would, but just yeah. as a, a side note. Also, the DS1307 is more expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's quite significantly more expensive, almost twice as much, because Maxim charges more money than NXP. Um, so these chips you know, are a couple bucks more. So we have both. If you need to maintain compatibility with existing code base that's using the 1307, use this one, because that'll give you, it's drop-in replaceable, it works great. 
if you are flexible with the code, you're willing to use our, the Arduino library or you're using um, a Linux computer where you can, like a Raspberry Pi, where you can change the text from DS1307 to PCF8523, it'll work perfectly fine and we suggest the PCF. Okay. But we have both. The multiple choices for, for measuring an imaginary thing that doesn't really exist. Exactly. Okay. I personally, I prefer the PCF and I'm moving, you know, the data logger shield is moved to the PCF because it can work with three volt or five volt just fine. And it's also a little less expensive, but we are, you know, we're going to keep around somewhat deprecated, but still quite popular DS1307 series. Okay. And if you need a precision real time clock, we always have the DS uh, 3221, 2331. I don't remember the exact part number, but check the um, product yeah, listing. Your, it's a precision, your time needs. super precision real time clock, but of course it will be even more expensive because it's, uh, temperature compensated. Okay. So nice, more common, higher quality. Okay. Many options for your real time clock needs. All right. That's new products. And with that, it's new products. Good work, Lady Data. Woot. You did it.